721 here, Big 550 KTRS. Well, the political field is getting a little busy, so we thought we'd check in with uh, Stephen Roberts, ABC News political analyst. Good morning, Stephen Roberts. Hey, McGraw. So only a few have announced, but there are a <laughs> whole lot of bees buzzing around <laughs> New Hampshire these days, aren't there? Well, there are, and it, it's a reflection of a fascinating fact uh, this year in American politics, McGraw. You know, traditionally Republicans for most of the last 50, 60 years have always nominated uh, the next in line. It's very much a royalist tradition that people named Nixon and Reagan, Dole, two Bushes, McCain, Romney, all of them had been um, had run before, all of them had been major figures in the party. But this time, for the first time, with the exception of Jeb Bush, uh, the field is, is very open to people who are much younger and, 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 and newer on the scene. The first three Republicans to announce for president, all first-term senators, barely been in Washington, Rubio, Cruz, Paul. So um, uh, it's exerting a magnetic pull. New Hampshire is exerting this magnetic pull because so many people, for the first time in generations, can fantasize that they actually have a shot at the nomination, and it's not going to go to the obvious choice who's been waiting in line. Steve Roberts, um, part of that is because um, uh, George W. Bush didn't have a successor. Dick Cheney didn't run. Mitt Romney was sort of the heir apparent, and there was no sort of second place last time. So there is nobody waiting in the wings. I guess you, you can make the argument Jeb Bush is, but how many of these people... Stephen Roberts, are actually playing the game. I'll have a good showing this time, which will set me up for four years and or eight years down the line. Well, I think that that is always part of the calculation, particularly for the younger candidates. As I say, you know, you look at Marco Rubio, he's 43 years old. Ted Cruz, 44 years old. Scott Walker, the governor of, um, of Wisconsin, 47 years old. These are, are, are figures who are just in the early stages of their political career and have plenty of time to build a national reputation, even if they don't win the nomination this time. So is that part of their calculation? Absolutely. A um, number of them are playing a long game, not a short game. The one, of course, uh, exception is Jeb Bush, who is in his 60s, uh, much closer in age to Hillary Clinton. And um, uh, and this is one of the real fault lines running through the Republican Party. You know, that so many of the younger candidates in New Hampshire over the weekend, the words they could not use often enough in talking about Hillary Clinton were old, yesterday, past. Um, and uh, it's a very old tradition in American politics for, for people to see themselves as the new generation. Bill Clinton was, when he ran himself, was the um, harbinger of the baby boomer generation coming to power. John F. Kennedy, 1960, a new generation of Americans, the, the uh, uh, men who had fought in World War II and were now coming to political power in their 40s. So this is a very old trope in American politics. And the interesting thing is that almost all of them fit this mold except for Jeb Bush, who's much uh, closer in age, only five years younger than Hillary Clinton, can't really make that same criticism of her. Okay, outside of uh, critical of being, uh, um, well, all 18 of them, 20 of them, however many are up there buzzing <laughs> around, they're all saying the exact same thing. Ronald Reagan was, you know, he, he had his own line, but, but all of them seem to be saying the exact same thing. So how much difference is there between one and the other, and how will the voters make a dis distinction? Well, uh, there are some differences starting to appear. You know, they all agree that they hate Hillary and they hate Barack Obama. What they're starting to disagree on is how you do it. Um, uh, the single biggest uh, difference is uh, you've got the, the very conservative candidates like Ted Cruz of Texas who say, look, we don't need the mushy middle. We don't need the moderates. We don't need the, the rhinos, the Republicans in name only. All we need to win is the conservative base of the Republican Party. But we have to get them excited, and we have to get them excited with pure, aggressive, conservative ideas. There are others who say this is crazy, that uh, only a third of Americans call themselves conservatives, and if you're going to win the presidency, you have to appeal to the broad middle ground of American politics, uh, and that includes a significant percentage of minorities. Let's remember Mitt Romney 
uh, was was uh, devastated in the last election. Uh, uh, Obama won over 90% of African Americans, over 70% of Asians and Hispanics. There are people like Lindsey Graham, the senator from South Carolina, who say the Republican Party is facing a demographic death spiral if they don't start appealing beyond their base. So that's the single biggest fault line. Do you just go hard to the right, or do you try to appeal to the middle? And there's a serious disagreement on that very key point. Yes, but, Steve Roberts... Even though, depending on where you sit on that argument, they're all, in terms of policy, basically saying the exact same thing. I think that is largely true with a few exceptions. For instance, you take the issue of immigration. Um, uh, Jeb Bush, uh, the former governor of uh, Florida, a man who speaks Spanish, married to a Mexican woman, always been far more receptive to the idea of providing a pathway to citizenship, uh, not only as a question of policy, but as a question of electoral strategy, whereas most Republicans in the field very much harder line on that issue. So there's a fault line there. On foreign policy, most of them uh, are, are, are very tough and, and aggressive and say Obama has not been vigorous enough in defending America's interests around the world. But then you get Rand Paul, the young senator from Kentucky, much more dubious, much more skeptical of foreign involvement, particularly military involvement. So there's a there's some daylight there. You're right in mo in most ways, McGraw, but you do see some differences on issues like immigration and uh, and and military policy. Right, and what's the biggest criticism they all go after pre uh, uh, Jeb Bush over, and that is his stance on immigration and his stance on Common Core. Which so uh, you know I don't know the people going to the polls in the Republican primaries are going to look at that Jeb Bush immigration and see that as a positive. Well, it's a it's a very uh, important question because um, uh, we saw in the last election that the policies on immigration, which helped Mitt Romney win the nomination, talking about self deportation, uh, were devastating uh, to the party's fortunes in the general election and. One of the things that you hear so often from Republicans as well, and particularly from the conservative base, is, well, we have to recreate the coalition of Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan ran in a very, very different America. The electorate was 88% white when uh, Ronald Reagan ran. It was 72% white in the last election, and it's going to be 70% in the next election. So it, you can't recreate uh, the coalition of Ronald Reagan because you can't recreate Ronald Reagan's America. It is long gone. And the smart Republicans understand that uh, and, and make that argument. But that's not universally understood or accepted in the Republican Party. And Ronald Reagan signed in basically an amnesty bill when it came to immigration. <laughs> You're absolutely Look, the last major bill that granted uh, uh, citizenship to about 3 million, it was the Simpson-Mazzoli bill. It was co-sponsored by... Uh, Alan Simpson, a Republican from Wyoming, uh, Ron Mazzoli, a Democrat from Kentucky, and signed by Ronald Wilson Reagan. It's a sign of how uh, much American politics has moved to the right that a lot of Republicans forget that. Uh, and I keep bringing this up and people's heads explode every time I bring the, this up. But Stephen Roberts, you know this. It's been since 1972 that a Republican has won the White House that didn't have a Bush on the ticket. Yes, um, and and you know it's if you look back even uh, earlier than that, for a, for two generations, virtually every Republican ticket had someone named Nixon, Bush, or Dole on it. Uh, in the last election was the first time in a long time that wasn't true, and um, so uh, and that's part of the interesting uh, and 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 I think in some ways a hopeful sign for the Republican Party because one of the reasons why so many, uh, nineteen of them, uh, swarmed to New Hampshire over the weekend is that royalist tradition in the Republican Party seems to be fading. And, and many uh, uh, younger members see an opportunity. Um, and, and that's the other big fault line in the Republican Party. It's not just a question of appealing to minorities through immigration. The other real difference is generational. Um, you've got so many, you're the first three Republicans to formally announce all first-term uh, senators in their 40s. Cruz, Paul, and uh, Rubio, uh, and um, uh, very much making this generational pitch uh, and saying Hillary Clinton is a creature of the past, a creature of yesterday, uh, with so much baggage, and implicitly, and not 
and, and, and increasingly explicitly that same argument was going to be made against Jeb Bush, who's only five years younger than Hillary Clinton. Steve Roberts, great job as always. Thanks for checking in. We'll talk sure. to you down the road. Absolutely. 7.30 here, Big 550 KTR.